My name is Brendan Ritchie, and I am doing a little something I'm calling AI Focus. While in town, that town being Orlando, Florida, for the IT Nation Connect Global Conference, I'm catching up with a whole bunch of industry experts to talk about all things AI. You're going to learn about the tools they use and the coolest things they've done with them and where they think this AI revolution is going. Let's jump into it. Last conversation for the day, Carl, CTO, First Focus. Everyone else has had to tell me who they are and what they do. Okay. I'm going to spare you the trouble. Okay. Uh, I know what you do. I work with you. Uh, you do tech stuff. Uh, do you want to elaborate on that at all? Is that enough? <laughs> I do tech stuff. You okay. do. You definitely okay. do that. Right. You do it so well. Uh, okay. What I want to know is, um, as a man who has uh, both built AI things, like uh, our virtual assistant, Sam, inside our business, who can actually hands-on do very advanced things with AI, what is your favorite AI tool and what's the coolest thing you've done with it? Uh, I think recently, probably my favorite tool is Lovable. Okay. Uh, and recently I just built a road mapping tool for all of the things that we're doing in the business. And basically it's a vibe coding tool and I was able to build out that actual application for our company in about six hours. What so would that have looked like two years ago, that process? It would have taken months and months of coding just right. to get it right. Uh, I would have needed a UI developer at the front and yeah. uh, a bit of a back-end specialist for the database elements and things like that. So uh, yeah, just amazing piece of technology. Okay, your, the, our development team internally uh, reports up to you yep. uh, via probably a few steps nowadays. Uh, but uh, what do their jobs look like now versus again, a year, two years ago? How do they use AI to, to code more effectively? Yeah, so for them, they're still coding, so they will do manual coding, but they're able to kick off with just really putting a concept in, getting 80% of the code uh, and getting, you know, hours and hours and hours of saving, not having to go from scratch. Mm -hmm. uh, but the really interesting way that they're using it is they'll get that 80% of code, but then they'll go through and make sure the libraries are all in line. They make sure that the pieces of code are you know, modular so that they can go through that and actually uh, build out the code and, and make sure that uh, the modules in each piece that they're building uh, to get them to that 100%, they go and use uh, things like Cursor and IDE sort of tool sets, which means that they can go and check all those elements, then they can check it for security, do linting elements, all those bits and pieces, and just really streamline the whole process. And then at the end, because they're a developer and they can actually read the code and vet it and know what's in it, uh, that process is a lot shorter. So in the development world then, is, is it the junior roles that are less and less in demand or is it actually juniors can do more technology, therefore seniors are less in demand? Well, both. I think, I think it's a little bit of both. I think yeah. the seniors are able to review it at the end and just really get, you know, put their eye to it and, and make sure that the code and the code base is all correct and what it should be. Um, with the junior, junior developers, they're actually learning much quicker. So it's like that 10 times factor. And like I said before, they can go and generate the code in natural language. And for them having to write that from scratch as a junior is really hard, right? Yeah. So they're actually generating all the code and learning it at the same time. So. so what I was wondering is so much of what AI can do is amazing, but it can make mistakes. And it's often that subject matter expertise that allows you to do more, but still have that, so, um, I guess, cautionary eye over it, you know, that QA piece. Yeah. So you, you, I assume you'd need the developers to actually know enough to spot a mistake. Correct, and that's where the senior developer yeah. comes in. So doing that QA at the end uh, right. with the senior developer uh, is really essential. So they're all using AI, it's just how they're using it. The senior one does it to look at exactly how strong the code is, to see if yep. there's any obvious mistakes. Junior ones can do more than ever because they've got this amazing technology. Yeah. How much uh, do you actually just see like it being problematic how easy it is for people like Ross, who I was just speaking to, uh, to create stuff called Lovable, using Lovable. Yeah. So like everyone's just like, I got a new app. Uh, like, is that is that a pain in the ass for you? It is, <laughs> like it, it, it is a little bit. Um, yeah. Vibe coding's great. Yeah. You can generate code, but if you can't go review that code, you don't know if it's got security flaws in it. You yeah. don't know if, you know, it's using outdated libraries that have gone end of life and yeah. it's now updated libraries. So you get these potential holes that are there. Yeah. But the vibe coding tools are getting so much better now because they'll go and do the linting process and security check across the top, which means that it's 
that gap and that problem is slowly disappearing. Yeah, is. I didn't realize that Lovable had uh, inbuilt security analysis to, to yeah. see how strong that is yeah. until I think maybe two nights ago. And uh, yeah, that was an interesting development. I imagine it wasn't launched out of the box with that. Is that something they've thrown on since? That's something that they've developed yeah. and put into the product as it's okay. gone on. And I think that's from demand for us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's like, so. it's awesome that I can do it. It'll suck if it gets hacked. So yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. <laughs> cool. All right, so uh, a bigger picture approach. Oh, oh. Where we cannot escape the the AI conversation. Well, what are you What are you excited about in this period where it is omnipresent? Well, and conversely, what are you actually kind of not particularly excited about? What What do you find a bit sort of maybe problematic? Problematic at the moment is probably the use of what well, the coin term agents, mm -hmm. which is you know going onto a web browser or doing acting like a human in a web browser and uh, filling out forms and potentially you know making mistakes as part of that. Uh, but probably the one that worries me the most is anything that is customer facing and requires some sort of financial decision. So where it's doing a, a quoting aspect for a client yeah, okay. or it's doing, you know, you hear about the airline ticket for free. Because, yeah, yep. you know, yeah. Uh, so it's that prompt engineering and knowing that LLMs haven't got that, that sort of uh, that security aspect really under control yet. Yeah, I think that whole data governance piece, every single conversation I have with both prospects and clients, everyone's just going, we got to get that so much tighter. Like, yeah. you know, permissions, accessibility, whatever, yeah. um, shareability, it's it's huge. Because as I keep saying, uh, you know, garbage in, garbage out. Um, <laughs> garbage in, garbage data out. is the food of AI. Yeah. Uh, okay, what about what you're really excited about? What, what gets you going? Oh, just the fact that how far we can go with this mm. and the potential applications as well. I think... Uh, the thing I'm most excited about is our client base is really diverse, right? So yeah. many different verticals that we play in uh, and the use cases and the potential in each of our clients and each of those verticals is so vast and so interesting. Um, yeah. Just really excites me about how much, how much we can do with the technology and, and what that looks like in the future. So, cool. yeah. All right. Well, for some reason, I'm uh, sweating in a room that I think is air conditioned to like 18 degrees and you're wearing a jersey. What is wrong with me? Why am I so poorly put together? <laughs> anyway, okay. Thank you so much for the chat. Uh, no it's great to see you. Uh, even though we'll be going to Universal Studios in like four hours. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. And apparently there's a like a beer trail thing or a bar I crawl. I think it's a, yeah, it's a beer crawl. Um, but cool. yeah, great. Because we definitely haven't had enough of that already. Yeah. So great. It. Cool. Great. All right. Thanks, <laughs> mate. Thanks, I hope you enjoyed that conversation. If you want to see more just like that from this series, you can find them on our LinkedIn company page or on our company YouTube page. I also just want to say a big thank you to the team at ConnectWise and IT Nation for having us involved.